There's a new Dragonflight patch coming out. I'm probably going to go and play... I'm going to play WoW again sometime soon. I'm kind of feeling like it's about time to come back to the game. Warcraft devs give a first look at Guardians of the Dream. Here we go. Let's take a look at it. Hello everyone, welcome to WoWcast. Today we're going to talk about our next major content update, Guardians of the Dream. And I have two special guests here with me today. Please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Taylor Sanders. I'm an encounter designer on the World of Warcraft team. And I'm Ann Stickney. I'm a senior narrative designer on the World of Warcraft team. Thank you guys so much for joining us. What is coming with Guardians of the Dream? Yeah, so Guardians of the Dream is a huge content update. Uh, we have a new outdoor zone, the Emerald Dream itself, right, that we're going to be traveling to. We have a new raid. Okay. Uh, we have new public events within um, the outdoor zone itself. And then also right. uh, Season 3 will be launching as well. So we just... This seems like just basically another patch, but all right. Shut fractures in time. Can you tell us what's next? What are we going to expect in this major content update? What else? Well, with Fractures in Time, we kind of wrapped up the story of the Bronze Dragon flight, and we also saw Eridicron take off for parts unknown. One person that we haven't seen since Zerilet Caverns is Farrakh. We get to catch up with him here. More importantly, what's going on is that Amir Drasil, that tree, well, he wants to burn down the fucking tree because he's an asshole, right? Yeah, he's corrupt. Oh, I forgot he's fucking corrupted. Oh, man. Why can't he just be an asshole? That was the best thing about Denathrius, is he was just a dick. He was just a self-obsessed dickhead. The seed that Same with Razagath. From the shop. It's like she's just an absolute insane crazy bitch. And it's like, yeah, we got to get rid of her, man. Like, she's nuts lands she's planted it it's been growing in the emerald dream and it's about to cross over uh -oh. it's a very powerful tree we're not the only ones interested in it of course okay. not so it can't be that easy <laughs> of course not no it can't be that it's never that easy so uh it turns out farak's kind of interested in this tree and he's got some friends that he's bringing along with him right we finally enter the portal into the emerald dream what does it look like what can we expect First off, we're finally going to the Emerald Dream, right? And <laughs> we've seen like bits and pieces of it since like what? Yeah, since I don't know, back in you know. Well, the... in vanilla WoW, we had the Emerald Dream. There was like that other area, but it was like data mined basically. And then you went to the Emerald Dream at the end of the uh, Emerald Nightmare raid. Classic days when the game was first kind of released. Druids, yeah, yeah, with the Druids, mm -hmm. and then uh, I think more recently yeah, yeah, the Emerald Nightmare raid mm -hmm. back in Legion, right? But we've always visited these little pockets and in guardians of the dream we get to visit like an actual section of the dream I, the emerald dream itself is a reflection of the wild world so it's green it's overgrown it's beautiful there's stuff blooming all over the place but also we aren't the only ones interested in that tree uh farak is there and he's got some allies with him so the place is while part of it is, you know, overgrown, wild, beautiful, blooming. There's How's he cor oh, oh, I guess he's corrupted by the void. Is that right? Because it can't be the old gods because we got rid of them. So it's got to be it's just corrupted by the void, by shadow flame. What the fuck does shadow flame mean? How the fuck can you be corrupted by a certain kind of fire? He absorbed the shadow flame. It's void fire. Okay, so he's corrupted by the void. Okay. So parts of it where Farrakh's forces has, have hit this place, it's a war-torn landscape, right? It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but we're there to fix it yeah. and make sure that Farrakh doesn't get what he wants. If you are familiar with lore, we're going to the Eye of Ysera, and it's a place that has been mentioned in lore for a very long time. We've never been there. It's okay. the center of the Emerald Dream. Not literally, <laughs> figuratively. So sure. the Eye of Ysera focuses on the areas of the dream that are, they, they need the most attention from the green dragon flight. And in Guardians of the Dream, it's a miracle hill. Uh, obviously, you know, we want to help bring this tree yeah. from the Emerald Dream into Azeroth. The outdoor area uh, that we have, you know, So it's like Home Depot where they grow like a tree and then like you take it from Home Depot and you put it in the backyard with our content update okay. is just absolutely gorgeous. The art team has really outdone themselves yet again. <laughs> and seeing the Emerald Dream in all of its glory, right, as players get to explore finally, like an actual zone that represents sort of all of the um, incredible 
like sort of artistic influence of the Emerald Dream, and, and we're going to see tons of great characters that yeah. we kind of know and love that are related um, to the Emerald Dream itself. So within this new zone, there's a new raid. So sorry, Can you tell right? us more about the new raid? Yeah, so one of the um, sort of war-torn places um, within the Emerald Dream um, is our new raid. I think that uh, I'd like actually if they uh, if they had like more vibrant colors. I feel like um, the colors in WoW like they feel like very uh, washed out. You know, you go back and you see some of like the Cataclysm zones and like the original WoW zones and they're very, um, uh, very vibrant, you know, like they're bleached. Yeah, it's like they left, it's like they left the Emerald Dream too, too long out in the sun. Mirror Drasil, the Dream's Hope. This is a nine boss uh, raid where players uh, get to explore one of the most interesting places within the Emerald Dream. The story here um, starts at Wellspring Temple. Um, which is sort of a place within the Emerald Dream that's feeding Amir Drasil, this world tree, all of its kind of energy and, and life force. It's nurturing the yeah. tree. It's a very important place um, to Farrakh and his designs on the Emerald Dream and, and what he wants to um, sort of achieve here. One wing of the temple is untouched by Farrakh and his allies for now and represents sort of the wild nature of the Emerald Dream. There are defenders of the temple here who are natural to the dream, and one of those defenders is our wing boss for that section, uh, Nimue. We I think this one looks really cool. Like, in my opinion, I think that they should have gone... I feel like the Emerald Dream just looks like, um... Uh, what was that? F uh, forest Zone in Legion? Uh, it was like, not Valdraken. Valshara, yeah, Valshara. It just looks like Valshara to me. Like, whenever I think of the Emerald Dream, you know what I would want to see? Pan's fucking Labyrinth. I want to see something that's a little bit more like a, a mixture between mysticism and grotesque. Ardenweald, I actually think Ardenweald hit the vibe check. Obviously, you know, I used to be a, an emo kid, right? Or a scene kid a little bit, right? Whenever I grew up. So my favorite zone was Revendreth. But objectively... Ardenweald was the best zone, and it wasn't even close. It was so fun. It was, it was actually, I think it's probably in the top 10 zones of WoW. Like, unironically, it is in the top 10 zones of WoW. Maldraxxus was a piece of shit. It was. It was a piece of shit. It was a microwaved piece of shit. But I think the other four zones were incredible. And I think the color palette of Bastion was unique. It was completely unique. Like, there was never a zone that we had that was like Bastion before. I really like Bastion as well. But uh, Ardenweald just felt so much different than what we had seen before from, like, the druidic nature theme. And I feel like this doesn't really hit that vibe check. Like, again, I kind of wanted to see, you know, Pan's Labyrinth, kind of. Stuff like this. Like this. This is great. I love this. This is awesome. So when players enter Nimue's chamber, um, it's this beautiful sanctum that really represents both sort of the Emerald and Dream in yeah. its most pure form. On the floor of the chamber. And the reason why is I think that, like, a lot of people try to use the theme of, like, dark isn't actually evil. It's actually the light that can also be evil. But I think that a lot of times whenever you try to use that trope, it usually just comes off as being an allegory to religion. And I see this all the time with, like, different types of games and different narratives, etc., and I think that one example that it kind of, they did it pretty well, uh, was in Final Fantasy, right? Is like the, uh, what was it, like that kid that came from the other world and he was trying to explain how actually the light could be like just this complete oblivion of existence because everything was bright. And it was actually very interesting. I think it was great. And World of Warcraft did this as well, by the way. Uh, they did. Uh, and like for in Legion, right? With uh, Illidan breaking the fucking Naru, uh, just disenchanting the Naru. That was amazing. So I, I think that in the same way, I was kind of hoping that they would play into more of the, cause you know, they have the cosmology chart of, of all the different forces in World of Warcraft, right? Whether it's the Titans, the Void, etc. And I think what makes them interesting is that like, is it are, is really, because, like, like, the light and the dark is kind of like, uh, or the light and, like, the scourge, or whatever the fuck you want to call that. Like, these are kind of, like, polar opposites. But I feel like the void is oblivion, which destroys things. And then the emerald dream is uh, unchecked growth, which just makes more things. And you need some sort of, like, balance between the two. So I was hoping that you would have a certain level of, like, uh 
unsettling nature of the of the Emerald Dream, because like the the implication of a cosmology chart like that, at least in what I thought it was supposed to be, like what do I know? But what I thought it was supposed to be was the implication that they existed in equilibrium. And it's not that like one of them is the good side and everybody else is bad. It's that they had to exist in equilibrium. Right? Yeah, cancer. Yeah, it, it, that, that's a good example. Yeah, chaotic good. Yeah, and so like I was hoping that we would see more of that. And I hope that they explore that idea. Nimue um, is ordering the weave of the Emerald Dream itself, sort of represent the act of creating things with the Emerald Dream and defending it and, and protecting it. In the other wing of uh, our raid, that's cool. uh, this is a wing like that's that. been destroyed by Farak and his molten allies, right? Smolderon sits at the end of the swing, uh, the Fire Lord well. himself, and Fire has sort of poured no. through this portal where Farak has brought the Fire Firelands Lands. sort of screaming, you know, into the I temple like the itself. Lands. So we're going to see uh, all the destruction that that has wrought um, and be able to fight Smolderon right at the end of that wing. Another encounter we have uh, within the raid is Tendril Sage Swift, who is one of the leaders of the Druid of the Flame. Yeah, Druids of the Flame, basically the last time we saw them was in Cataclysm when we defeated Thandral Staghelm. But they've been planning this kind of resurgence, and with the burning of Teldrassil, they've been able to recruit a lot more willing people to go along with their plans. The exciting thing about this encounter is that finally we'll get to dragon ride within a raid encounter um, in dragon flight. Cool. So um, this is incredibly a cool opportunity to be able to jump on dragon back with you know all of your friends that you're raiding with um, and pursue Tendril as he sort of like flies around a Mirdrasil, <laughs> right? You're like banking through fireballs and stuff. I'd be toward... very upset if they end this expansion without us running down Galakrond. You know, I like, uh, I, I personally think that I, I've always thought that, uh, 40 man raids would be, they're much more, uh, cinematic in nature. And I kind of wish that they made raids easier and they just made them way fucking cooler. Cause I could imagine like, remember like the Legion event, for example, remember the, the Legion event where you would go to the different areas and like everybody was on their mount. Like, dude, can you imagine, like, a 40-man raid on the dragon riding mounts trying to fucking harpoon down Galakrond? That'd be fucking badass. Combat, so um, it's gonna be really exciting to see. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah visually it sounds really cool mm -hmm. to have 25 people all mount up, and but yeah. mechanically, yeah. we need people to test it out. <laughs> we just need people to test yeah, it out. Yeah, the PTR is so helpful for that. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be hard. And then, of course, I mean, we can't forget oh, yeah. uh, Farak. Right. Finally. Yeah, the reason. Kind of spicy, nasty boy. Oh, I'm yeah. ready to beat him up. <laughs> he's, uh, he's here in the Emerald Dream, and the raid will end with a showdown against, you know, the Fire Incarnate himself. Mm. Is there any, like, juicy rewards in the raid? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, much as in other raids um, for uh, during Dragonflight, players can expect some new armor sets that oh, they can earn. Oh, I like this. Is this the Undead Only set? Is it DK set? Oh, I might come back to the game then. This is really cool. Yeah, I really like this. This is fucking, this is actually fucking badass. Like, this is fucking stupid. But that's even cool. Like, the helmet? They've never done something like this before. Oh, they have. But still, it looks really cool. Right, um, that are yeah, sort I love of class-themed. Um, but also have a touch that's that they can earn, right, um, that are... Is this paladin? I bet that would probably look really good on, like, a male paladin. I think on human paladin, like the human female paladin, like some of the pieces are a little bit awkward, but otherwise that looks great. And I like that they're actually going with a big hat this time. We don't really have as many big hat uh, transmogs, you know? You compare that to like Final Fantasy and like every black mage has a big black hat, you know? I like that. Sort of class themed, um, but also have a touch of the Emerald Dream to them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, They're beautiful. Of course, the warrior <laughs> set art is absolutely incredible for these uh, new sets uh, within the raid. So they can expect new sets to earn um, that'll each have you know class bonuses cool on bonuses, them. Yeah. Oh, um, is that the fucking warlock set? Holy shit! Holy fuck! That's badass! Oh my god! That's actually really cool. What the fuck? Wow. Is this, what the fuck is this, bro? Don't tell me this shit's the warrior set. 
Don't fucking tell me this shit is the- this is not the warrior set, is it? It's the hunter set? Uh, they're, yeah, there's- the hunters are so dumb, aren't they? They are so stupid. But man, look at this war- this warlock set is fucking nuts! I love this! Oh my god! And I guess this is the monk set since it has the crane on it? Chi G or whatever the fuck? Look at that! Sham is crazy awesome also? Really? Yeah, I'm really impressed. I- like, personally, I like the- the- the Death Knight one the most. Because I see that Death Knight transmog, and I remember the true Death Knights. The Warcraft 2 hooded masks of terror. Do you know why, by the way, the Dark Portal has Death Knights on the side of it? It's because Death Knights signified the horrors of the Horde. It signified their mastery not only over their surrounding, but over death itself. And that it was meant to instill terror in anyone nearby. And so whenever I see a set that reminds me of the old original Death Knights, the Terran Gorfine Death Knights, I like it. I'm really excited to get my hands on them uh, for I my love, characters. I love collecting the sets too. Yeah. They're going to show of the warrior set. Hands on something. Yes. Farrakh has got something really tasty for us to get our hands on. Ah. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a new legendary weapon coming yes. uh, in okay. Guardians of the Dream. This is going to be a two-handed axe that players can earn. They'll have. To yeah, we'll play this game. I think this is yeah. We will do this. This seems like a good idea. It's a real legendary. Look at that. Yeah, this is all right. That's Shadowborn recolored. That's fine. Doesn't matter to me. And you are right. It is basically Shadowborn. I don't care. It looks nice. So, okay. Why? Why? Why is it that we're holding it here? What's this for? What's this? What, what, what are you trying to bunt a fucking ba a baseball? It's too heavy for balance? What do you mean it's too heavy? I just defeated a fucking dragon. No. Center of mass? That's not even a center of mass. I guarantee you the center of mass for this is probably right about here. No, probably right about here even. It's not even remotely close. You could never swing that? Yeah, if this is real, this would probably be... 80 pounds. I would say probably 80 pounds if it was made out of steel. There's no way somebody's gonna be swinging this fucking thing around. Post on Twitter. Yes. What is this? Like, why do they do this with the fucking weapons, man? Just let us hold it at the bottom. What's going on? I don't give a fuck about physics. I think it's cool to hold it at the end because the sword sticks out a long way and you hit people with it and it's cool. If you go back and you look at Soul Cleaver or Might of Minithil from Kel'Thuzad or Soul Cleaver was from Terran Gorfiend in uh, Black Temple, you were holding that shit at the end. And it was fucking badass. It was awesome. It's not realistic. Did you know an axe on fire isn't realistic? Did you know Farak isn't real? No, I want to hold it at the bottom. What is this? The way he grabs it's weird. Now, this is fucking awesome. We're obviously going to get it. Hopefully, it'll be broken in PvP so I can finally get fucking Gladiator again. But we'll see what happens. To keep the rear to the ground exactly on how to get their hands on it. Um, but yeah, it's a really powerful weapon um, wielded by... Um, Farak himself. Um, it's called Fear Laugh the Dream Render. That's cool. uh, we've been listening to feedback um, from the Embers of Neltharian update, and um, you know we're uh, we, we hope we can provide um, something that you know players really feel like they can um, earn the axe um, over time and um, feel really rewarded for their time in the raid. So we've spoke about the amazing raid and the beautiful zone of the Emerald Dream. What other things can we expect in Guardians of the Dream? So we've got something really unique coming to Guardians of the Dream. What's that? It's not just one public event, Moon it's boys. three of them. And they feed into each other in this kind of cyclical sort of wilderness nature kind of thing. <laughs> there's okay. there's three different events. First one is the Super Bloom, and that one is if you've ever played Overwatch, it's like protecting the payload, right? <laughs> okay, so you've got this ancient who's going through and he's trying to, you know, bloom the dream and you have to help him out by defending him from things and helping him get things, that kind of stuff. When that's done, it triggers the second public event called the Emerald Frenzy. And it's 
a farming kind of public event where uh, wilderness has kind of gotten out of control. So you go through, you're farming everything, and it's dropping currency, it's dropping seeds left and right. The more people that are <laughs> in it, the more stuff you get, and it's just a grab. So that feeds into the Emerald Bounty. And with the Emerald Bounty, it's a fostering event, right? So all around the Emerald Dream, there's piles of dirt. You can take those seeds that you gathered and plant them in the dirt. Over the course of five minutes, it'll grow into a sprout. And the more people that show up and feed that sprout and, and nurture that sprout, the bigger it'll get. When it blooms after that five minutes... So it's like that cooking thing? In, uh, with with uh, the walruses? You get to loot it for cool stuff. I love cool stuff. Can you tell us more about it, the new renowned about? faction in this yes, patch? Of course. We've got the Dream Wardens. I mean, we're going into the Emerald Dream, right? Oh, yeah. So the Emerald Dream is full of creatures that live there. And they also have a vested interest in protecting Amir Drasil. So they've decided to go ahead and team up with us. But it's <laughs> composed of those, those creatures from the Emerald Dream. So you've got Keepers, you've got Dryads, you've got Druids, obviously. You've got There's the a Moon Boy Village? Holy shit! Look at them all. Obviously, you've got the green dragonfly. You've got rune bears. They're new. Oh, They're that. very cool. Yeah. Um, and they've all come together to just kind of like help us out. And obviously, as with any renown that we've got, there are some really cool rewards involved as you increase your reputation with these guys. That's cool. I need to it's level my like druid he... alt. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> For this, because it's just it's druid heaven. <laughs> yes, yeah. druid heaven. Ann and I both played druids, you know, way back in 2004. So I think we're particularly excited to get to interact with this faction. I think we've never seen before in WoW um, these like types of characters that are really reminiscent of like Warcraft three and like yeah. night elf and druid lore. So it's going to be very exciting to interact with a lot of those creatures and characters um, that I associate with like my first character ever. So as we're dragon riding, what the fuck is this? Through this new zone, is there new dragon riding? anything yeah absolutely so um players will be able to drag and ride through the emerald dream from day so one oh, uh, which is really oh, a treat yeah. with all the incredible art that mm -hmm. is within the zone just in itself you there's also walk that zone <laughs> yeah exactly right i want to swoop under branches yeah. and like you know along the rivers and and through that environment um, they're also going to be able to collect new glyphs that are hidden around the zone and some new transmog appearances uh, oh that's cool they have the, these are nether drakes I read something about them adding Nether Drakes back. Oh, that looks pretty nice. I, I, this is the one that I got, by the way. All, all those years ago, I got the Onyx Netherwing Drake. This is, uh, there's a new dragon riding um, appearance and a new dragon riding mounts. That's so, cool. Uh, there's a lot there for players who are interested in dragon riding and have enjoyed that during Dragonflight. I am all about collecting customization, especially for my dragon, so that, I'm super excited about that. Yeah, there's a lot there for players. I remember I never wanted to customize my dragon because I just always assumed I'd get Gladiator and then I didn't get Gladiator. So I'm just riding around on a piece of shit. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything cool at all. Yeah, washed up. Well, maybe I can try to get... No, I can't, because, like, nobody plays PvP anymore. Players who enjoy that. Um, there's also a new active ability that players will be able to earn, um, you know, with their glyphs called Second Wind that allows them to um, sort of, like, regain vigor instantly. Ooh. So they can gain a little bit more speed. There's new dragon riding races where they can try to, okay. um, you know, try their skills at that with some of these new abilities that they'll earn. Um, and yeah, we're just excited to see how players enjoy zooming through uh, the skies in the Emerald Dream itself. It's that lit. sounds handy for that dragon riding encounter, too. Yes. yes. So you may want to collect your glyphs right away. <laughs> <laughs> practice. Just practice. Yeah, get some practice in. <laughs> Is this like the phone game advertisement logic where they have the person that's playing the game do something obviously fucking stupid, like run directly through the fireball just to like entice people to play so they're like, oh, I could do it better? And there's going to be a new season. Can you tell us more about what the season will be? Yeah, absolutely. So season three will start with Guardians of the Dream uh, and with it becomes a new uh, Mythic Plus map pool. So we have eight new dungeons that are arriving for players to... Throne of the Tide. So that's interesting. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Black Rook Hold. 
Oh, fuck. Remember that? Remember, remember people getting hit by the boulders? Enjoy in Mythic Plus. Um, among these are some dungeons that are appearing for the first time in Mythic Plus that we're really excited about. Yeah, Wake we had Man our Mega Dungeon, you know, that players mm. have really been enjoying from uh, the Dawn of the Infinite update. Yes. I never did And this. we're splitting that into two separate dungeons so for never players expected, to though. enjoy in Mythic Plus. We also have two dungeons included in the map pool that really fit the theme of uh, the wild nature of the Emerald Dream. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is the Everbloom, which we last saw sort of in a challenge mode format. Uh, and the second... I it, actually really like this dungeon. I thought this dungeon was great. It was kind of sad to me that the dungeon... I, I wish this dungeon had better bonus objectives. I wish that every Mythic Plus dungeon didn't have the same goals. I, I, I don't know, like, it, it's like a weird way to look at it, but, like, I wish that there were, like, different ways to, to do them. Should be fit. Skip got fixed? Oh, really? You can't get on, like, the Mammoth and, and jump up there and fight the last boss, or second to last boss? ...is Darkheart Thicket, uh, which we last enjoyed during Legion. Um, which has a really druidic theme, right? Yeah. As we sort of like venture into the beginnings of the Emerald Nightmare and that story um, yeah. back at that time. So we're excited to get players in there and um, you know see if the routes have changed since <laughs> you know the last time they were in That's the dungeons. True. For each new season, we like to have a mix of dungeons that are more linear, but also mix that up with dungeons that are more open, like Ataldazar, yeah. you know, and Wakerest Manor in a way to try to you know keep some variety in there. And players who enjoy routing can have some options, you know, um, to really like sink their teeth. Into. <laughs> There's um, going to be, of course, Mythic Plus new rewards. Yeah, absolutely. Where's the new mount? For the new season? Uh, yeah, Maybe there'll be some us. new a new season of PvP where's, rewards. Where's the new mount? Um, so, okay. you know, new um, cosmetic rewards. Oh, for the priest one looks pretty cool. This looks stupid, though. <laughs> Who will wear this fucking helmet? Bro, this looks like the, uh, this looks like the juggernaut from, like, uh, X-Men, but, like, dumber. <laughs> it's not Warrior. There's no way that's warrior. <laughs> no, man, that's got to be like a hunter or something like that, right? It's got to be some... There's no way. Like, yeah, it needs... Yeah, it needs... Where's the horns on the helmet? Players to, you know, uh, achieve in uh, mm -hmm. battlegrounds and arenas. Oh, so like work on mount. your gladiator when it comes out. Get yep. that fancy new map. Oh, I'm going to get this one for sure this time, guys. Hey, hey, this one, it's going to happen for sure. First, first month of the season, we're going to get gladiator this time. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. yes. So everyone wants to know, when is the PTR going to happen? Yeah, so the PTR will be coming this week. We'll be on the PTR, you know, Ann and I will okay. be running around, and we would <laughs> like to see um, players in there with us um, enjoying the new content that we have. Thank you both so much for hanging out and talking about Gardens of the Dream with me, and thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll see you next time. I'm disappointed that they went with the, the art direction Emerald with Dream. the Emerald Dream. I am. I, I'm genuinely disappointed because, like, what's the difference between this and Valshara? Okay, well, let, let's talk about everything, right? Like, so I, I don't I don't like the way it looks. I, I wish that the colors were much more, like, especially whenever you're going into, like, the, uh, you, you know, like, the, the genesis of, of, like, you know, like, life in a way, right? Uh, I feel like you should have stronger and more vibrant colors. You know, it should feel like it's a really... Uh, like, like I, I'm not thinking about the word, a, a, a really, like, in, intense experience, right? And I don't know if it really, I, I, actually, I don't know. I, I don't think this delivers that vibe at all, right? It, it doesn't. I don't think it delivers the vibe in any way. Uh, so I, I think the visuals are boring, and I don't really like that. Uh, besides that, uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff. Uh, the story, uh, I don't really, like, Farak is, is crazy because he's corrupted by the Void. I, that's, I, that's interesting. I've never heard that one before. Uh, there he is, and he... I, I, hopefully he does this actually in the game, and he, like, lights shit on fire, like Deathwing did in Cataclysm. I like that. Uh, the new uh, the new raid, uh, I, I think this was the only part of it that I really liked. I, I, I really like this NPC a lot. I think this is probably the most interesting... The, the most interesting NPC that we've seen out of the whole trailer. I, I really like this. Raids inspired by Firelands later on? Yeah, I think that's cool. Uh, this guy is cool. I, I really like this thing. This thing was really badass. Uh, this, like, weird fucking magma worm. I like this a lot. This is just Bail Rock from Firelands, uh, which is fine. That's whatever. And there's literally Major Domo from Firelands. And let's see here. Dragon riding new stuff. I guess this is some form of, uh, of RP event. The new weapon... As I said, uh, this is what I think about the new weapon. What the fuck? 
But other than that, it looks decent. Vast, ever-changing spirit world that exists uh, outside the boundaries of the physical world. Yeah, I think so. And uh, let's see if I can find the rest of this. Uh, but yeah, the new axe does look cool. Like, I actually, I actually do like the look of the axe. This is nice. I don't like how the character holds it, but that's like a minor thing. Uh, let's see. Besides that, let's see. What else do we have? This event doesn't really seem like it's as particularly exciting as they're making it out to be. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really know if it's going to be that exciting. It just seems like kind of like a world quest with a bunch of other people, which is like kind of okay, but I feel like, uh, you know, that stuff is never really particularly compelling. Uh, let's see. Besides that, you've got the new dragons, the new mount. That that thing looked pretty cool. Well, not this. This one looks dumb. Uh, but wherever it was, yeah, that one. I, I really liked the way that looked. And let's see what else. I'm assuming this probably is going to be like a dragon riding customization, same way Razageth was. I'm guessing. I have no idea. Uh, the Mythic Plus Dungeons. I just think, again, like, uh, I don't know. Like, if you were able to, like, kill them and they have, like, a different type of progression or they give you different loot or something like that. Like, for example, if you kill different mini-bosses in, uh, in the dungeon, it unlocks different items or they drop different items. I, I don't know. It's just like, it feels like it's, uh, every dungeon has the exact same objective. And it's been this way since Legion. Pogs want it simple and easy. Yeah, but I think doesn't Classic WoW kind of at least disprove a little bit of that? And I think that you should have simple and easy dungeons, but you should also have dungeons that are like BRD. Because BRD didn't feel like you were zoning into a dungeon. It felt like you were zoning into a city. I like it because it's such an expansive dungeon and it really captures the sense of scope. It has like, um, it has doors that are like 200 feet high. And you can open that door, or you can walk over that door, or you can do a fire run to get to Molten Core. Like, think about all the different ways people run BRD in Classic WoW. Blackrock Depths, like original vanilla WoW BRD, is the best dungeon Blizzard's ever made. And I don't think that there's ever been a dungeon that's come out since then that's as good as that.